What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over console commands and cheats in uh, your project, in your Unreal Engine project. So specifically, I'm going to be using my fighting game template uh, to be able to enter these console commands as well as just add them to the list so I can use them for the project. But you can do this on any project that you'd like. It doesn't have to be the fighting game template or anything like that. The only thing I'm going to be using from the fighting game template specifically are the player references and I'm going to use them to modify values within the individual players. So if you don't uh, care about that or you have your own player references, whatever, then it won't even matter if you're using a different project anyway. Okay, so uh, I'll cover this in full, but first let's, let's see what it looks like. So um, if you hit the tilde key and it's like a, a tick slash tilde, I believe is what they're referred to as. It's the key right above tab on the left hand side of your keyboard, right under escape, right, right to the left of your one key on your number row, not your number pad. That's about as clear as I can be. I will post the, the key in the description. There you go. So if you click the tilde key and you're selected in your window, you'll open up this command, this console command box right here. That's this black thing with the this is the console right here waiting for input. If I click it again, I can also use it here and the console input will show up above me. And then I click it again to make it go away. Now, if you're clicked into the engine or something similar and you click tilde, you'll get this command window. Not a big deal, but um, this doesn't have all the same, it's not really scoped in the same. This is more for the editor itself. So we don't really want this one, we want the, the one in here. So make sure you're clicked on the window, click the key, um, and then we can start typing. So console commands are very useful. You can do a lot of stuff with them. So there's a ton that exists without me making any, right? Like all this, they show you different stats for things. They show you tick groups and shaders and rendering and all this stuff. Now we won't get into all that today because there are a ton and you could have a video on what each one actually means. But we are gonna get into making our own. So for example, maybe we want our mutants to get full super meter so I don't have to sit there and mash the button to gain super, right? Because in the fighting game template, I have to either take damage or deal damage to gain points to my super meter. However, maybe I just want to test the super move without doing that. So what I would do is have a cheat, and I call it cheat full super all, and I can give both my players full super meter. You can see down at the bottom, the bars are both blue now and it'll function correctly. I can actually perform this action. Then when the attack is done, I can go ahead and see that my super meter has depleted and then I can call it again if I wanna test it again. It's that simple. This is a lot faster than sitting there and trying to gain super meter the whole time. So it only takes a few minutes to set up and then it can save you seriously hours down the line. It should be noted that these can't be used in shipping builds without editing the engine code itself. So if you wanna have cheats in game to unlock things, uh, that's a video we'll be doing another time. But for now, this is mainly debugging and you know debugging cheats and console commands for editing. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, I'm just gonna note that I've done this in the game mode. You can do this in a few places. Be aware that not every code location or blueprint location actually supports this so you have to be kind of careful where you put your cheats you can put them in a thing called cheat manager which would be really useful I actually prefer putting them in the game mode because the game mode is really easy to access we kind of know which one we're, we're using and um, the game mode to me also just feels like a good place because I sometimes separate them based on the game mode we're in like if you have multiple game types you might want different cheats for those types so I'm gonna put them in the game mode um, in the description, I'll probably link all the places you are allowed to put them. It's actually not that that many places, but I think the game mode is probably my favorite. So, okay, so just real quick, uh, you can see that I'm using the default game mode BP. So if we go to default game mode BP, you'll see that I am. It is a child class of the fighter template game mode, and just so you can see it, fighter template game mode. So if we put the cheats in either the default game mode BP or the fighter template game mode, we will have access to them. Now, assuming that the fighter template game mode is like a base game mode, which it doesn't have to be, but any any child classes of this will have the cheats. So regarding what I just said about different game modes not having certain cheats, if you want all game modes to have certain cheats, as long as they're all children of the, of the class you're putting these in, all your game modes can have those cheats. So just so there's no confusion. 
All right, so this is my fighter template game mode.h. This is where I'm gonna put the cheats in. Yes, this is in C++. You can create these in Blueprint as well. If you make a custom event, you can actually call your custom events. So I think they have to be in either the game mode or the level blueprint if you put them in uh, blueprints. I know those are some of the common areas to put them. But we're gonna focus specifically on putting them in a code class. Okay, so uh, again, this is my, my game mode. I'm in my header file, my .h file, and we're gonna add the functions that we wanna be able to call. So uh, whatever, whatever we name these functions is what the commands are gonna be called. Once you do u function exec for execute, which I guess I'm saying it incorrectly if I'm saying exec, but <laughs> uh, this is execute, right? So uh, once you put the u function here, and then I usually do category exec functions, that's kind of the, the common syntax for this. Uh, once you do this, this will be registered as a console command. So right off the bat, before we do any functionality, all you have to do is add a function. I called mine void cheat full heal all. And then here's my u function uh, right above it. And that will instantly make me be able to call it in the game once I, of course, build the solution and then go into Unreal and compile if necessary. Once that's done, I'll be able to use these in game. Now, you might. Uh, you might want to label these like you don't have to call this cheat full heal all you could just call this full heal all or whatever you want um but i recommend calling them cheats especially if you're working with other people and they see like a full heal all function they might use this at the wrong time when they think oh maybe at the end of a battle we should full heal everyone and that's fine probably in this case but in a lot of cases that'll screw things up if you're if they're meant to be cheats so just be careful with this make sure if you're working with other people that it's either clear it's a cheat or that it should only be called from console command or something like that and you can see i've labeled them all as cheat colon and then what it does so i have cheat full heal all which will full heal every player and then i have cheat full heal player that takes in an integer player number so player one or two since it's a fighting game uh perhaps larger if we have like a thug mode or like a you know like a side scroller mode where we're beating up a bunch of thugs or beating up people as if it's um streets of rage or something like that but basically this takes in the the player index and based on what we we put in we can heal a specific player and i'll show you more of that later and then i had cheat full uh full super all for full super meter and then cheat full super player which is saying it's the same as cheat full heal player where it gives a certain player full super okay so that's honestly not too bad um that's all you have to do i mean we have to define the logic in the cpp file but before we do that I just want to kind of show you what I've done to to perform this logic. So, um, if you've been following the fighting game tutorial series, and it's okay if you haven't, I, I'm going to go over it right now. But if you have, you'll be familiar with some of the functions we have where we, where we heal players and we take damage to players. These are kind of complex functions at this point because they have stun times and, and uh, launch and pushback and things like that. So... I went ahead and made two new functions because I thought this was easier. Instead of adding to super meter and adding the full amount and all that stuff, I went ahead and made two functions that are public. Make sure they're public because these are these are going to be setters or these are going to be mutators if you're familiar with those terms. Basically, we're going to take in a value and then set um, the value of a variable within the fighter template character. That's all we're doing. So. Again, whether you're following the fighting game tutorial series or not, just make sure you have some functions or some public variables that you can go ahead and set easily from the game mode. So I have set health and set super meter, which I've set, which I've created here. And then when I go into my fighter template character.cpp, I'll show you what they're doing. They're simply it, the health variable that's coming into this function is setting the player health variable of the character equal to that and same with the super meter the float super meter is being used to set the super meter amount that the character has so that's how simple these functions are they're literally just setters mutators they're there to set variables within the character class now if we go to our fighter template game mode.cpp 
we will be able to call these functions and set the player's health to full and then set the player's super meter to full. We can also kill players on the spot, um, teleport them, change levels, do whatever you want. And anything you can code or put in blueprints, you can make happen with a cheat. It, the cheat simply executes other code, but usually code that you can't access in another way. So it's simple enough, it's not, a, it's not very complicated. Basically, go ahead and write out your functions in the CPP file to cheat full heal all, cheat full heal player with the integer player number, cheat full, uh, full super all, and cheat full super player with the integer player number again. Now I'm gonna do the same logic for all these, and it's okay if these aren't the neatest, or, or even if they're not the most optimized, because quite frankly, these cheats will probably never be used outside of the game. And if they are, that's fine, but they're only going to be used when the cheat is used, like a one-time thing. So it's okay if it's not the most optimized. So I'm going to do, make it very simple on us and just go ahead and check if the player exists and then set, you know, go ahead and set the variable we want. So if we use cheat, full heal all, then we want to check if player one exists. If player one exists, we want to set their health to be 1.0 uh, using the, the new function that we wrote, the, self, the set health function that we just created at the bottom here. Then we check if player 2 exists, and then if they do, player 2 set health 1.0. It should be noted that 1.0 is, uh, this variable is the variable we use for our progress bar. Progress bars are a ratio of 0 to 1, so 0 <laughs> refers to zero health, 0 0.5 refers to 50% of their health, and 1.0 refers to 100% of their health. So 1.0 is the same as setting their health to 100% of their health. Okay, so full heal all, we just basically check if both players exist, and if they do, we set both their health to full. Then, cheat full healed player. We take in an integer player number. Then we check if the player number is either equal to one or equal to two. If you had more characters, you could easily do a switch statement here and just check. I don't think it's really necessary for, for two characters, but if you do have more, you might wanna do a switch case. And if you do a switch statement, then um, you can go ahead and, and check all your players and determine the player to set. But we do the same thing here. We basically check if the player number is equal to one or two if not, we don't do anything. You could have an else here that's like, heal everyone if you want or something like that. But I think if you're going to use this function then and you don't have a player that exists or, or if the player number is an invalid player number, you probably don't want to heal anybody. Then you do the exact same logic. If player one exists, set health to one. But we only do it for player one. We don't set player two to health one. And same with player two. Else, if player number equals two, then we check if they exist. And if they do, set their health. And then I think you guys understand it by now, so I'll show you this, but this is the same thing. Cheat full super all. I check if both the players exist, and then I call it the set super meter function with 1.0, which is max super meter. And you can see that's the function we just created in here for super meter. Then in cheat full super player, I take in the player number, check if the player is valid, and then set their super meter. So these are very simple cheats. You can have much more complex ones if you'd like. Now let's go into the game and I'll show you exactly what all these cheats do real quick. I mean, you can probably understand, but just to show you that they all work. So if I do cheat full super all, everyone gets super meter, right? And then I can go ahead and press my super attack. Great. And then um, I can go ahead and do cheat full super player with a one. That's how you do this. You do space and then you do the integer you want to use for the argument. So one means uh, player one. Now, um, I'm going to give you a little spoiler. This is actually for the next episode of the fighting game tutorial. But I've also done this where the second player can now use their super move. So... Um, now you can see player two is out. So let me let player one run out as well. And I'll show you that you can differentiate. Okay, so now if we do cheat uh, full super player two, you can see player two goes to full, but player one does not. Now look at our health situation. If I do cheat 
full heal player two. And you can see I accidentally didn't put a space, so it didn't work. If you do cheat full heal player space two, you can see player two's health goes to full. Of course, same if I do player one. And then if we both lose health one final time, you can see I can call cheat full heal all to heal everyone to max. Again, it's those are very simple cheats, but at the end of the day, they can save you hours alone. So these are actually insanely useful, and even if we do in-game cheats later, the debug uh, command or console commands and cheats are always going to be useful on their own. So thanks, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it helped you out. I hope it helped you with your your console commands. I hope it helped you understand how kind of console commands and cheats in general work in Unreal Engine. And if it did, please subscribe. It means more to me than anything else you can do for the channel and it helps me more than anything else you can do for the channel as well if you had any issues you can feel free to join the discord i can't put it in an icard but it's in the description uh, if you click the link you'll join the community and in the community we'll be happy to help you with any of the issues you had or you can recommend ideas for me there or whatever you'd like lastly guys if you want to come support me on twitch we've been playing dark souls 2 and we're going to start resident evil 7 this weekend which i'm very excited about so, uh, stream Wednesday, 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Souls games, and Friday, 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Resident Evil games. So, anyway, guys, thanks again so much for watching this video. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.